Our fourth speaker is an average guy who enjoys hikes, friends, food, and dragons. <laughs> Be still my heart. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Jesse Mully. Hope you guys like old medieval type stories. <laughs> I didn't think they were gonna crack. I just... <laughs> the word wild derives from the old English word hoelde, often associated with the woods or forest. And in these times, it was common for people of the medieval era to take inspiration, to use it as a setting for their stories, myths, and legends. And now I invite you to a small little story of my own. The sound of nothingness soothed my nerves as I drew in the sight of this small pond and creek. Never had I seen a more calm and tranquil reservoir of liquid in my travels. But my stupor was soon interrupted. The fading sunlight caught my eye. Panic began to set in, for in the woods where night began to come alive. I picked myself up, straining against the weight of my armor, ironic that being what was designed to protect me was now to the source of my current bout of hardship. I stretched out my body, adjusting to my skin of steel, and gripped the hilt of my entrusted blade, ready to embark on my quest. The clanging of metal as my boots struck the earth gave me assurance in the silence of the woods all around. I was not scared, for I was a man of God, protected by divine right. My faith led me here, to the aid of some township, whose woods were troubled by some sinister work. With the sun almost gone, I hurried my pace. I must reach the town before the light had extinguished. As strong and sure of my might, I was not to tempt fate and engage with the darkness that night. I would be damned if I can this far to fall prey so easily to my carelessness. All light evaporated and the woods became shadow as the sun lifted one last ray of gold before being snuffed at the crest of the I cursed myself for stalling my time as I rummaged through my pack, desperate to find my one final option. The approaching sounds from deep in the woods grew ever so loud. <sighs> my fingers caught hold of a familiar object. Quickly, I reached for a branch and tore it asunder. Wrapping it in cloth, I ignited it with flint. A slow burst of orange light danced on the tree limb. A small son of my own, as I thought. Alas, the comforting feeling was soon made no as my life soon bore witness a sea of eyes pursuing me. I tore off further into the wilds, away from the starving lupine eyes that pierced the dark. If I were ever to have any hope of survival, I must find any, if some breadth of civilization. The rasping of my breathing clouded my head. Twas the only noise I could hear besides my throbbing heart. In the darkness, a glimmer of hope sparkled. Salvation, I thought. God hath delivered me to my fellow man. I turned to face my pursuers, only to find nary a trace. No howls, snarls, or yips. A stern breeze only that pitted tree upon tree with thrashing of twigs. Was this only the workings of my mind? No matter. I pushed forward towards the twinkle, my bastion of hope. As I drew ever closer, a familiar shape took hold in my eyes, a house Warm light crept from the window, and the all too common smell of ash and smoke softly billowed forth from a lone stone chimney. I swiveled my head, and my body followed, one last act of reassurance to prove that my persons were safely alone. If there ever were a pack of beasts, they had now become memory and abandoned their hunt. I turned towards back the house, confident and relieved, and made my march up to a stern oak door. Whose residence might this be? I called out into the house. My proclamation was not received. My gauntlet pushed out, opening the door with the care, and an eerie creak stung my ears as the door hinges relented. This house was dead aside from this fire. A wide open room laid bare before me, not a single trace of occupants in this lone old house. I drew my body closer to the source of the warmth. As I approached the tip of the flames, all fire snuffed out, including my torch, as so too did the walls of the cabin, revealing the woods. An illusion, the work of Ill, Ill magic, I screamed to myself. Fear had not set in. 
until I felt its breath. My gaze and turned and fixed upon its sight the horror of such things, forgotten long that haunt the woods of old, neither beast nor man, a primal incarnation that stood before me. Oh God, I managed to mutter as the full moon shattered through the parting of the clouds. Patches of scales, flesh and fur made up its form. On its head grew antler and bone, twisted to that of a crown. Its arms like trees carved by anger, ready to rend flesh and rip out one's soul. Its feet were long oiled talons, jutting with nails formed of sharp obsidian, and its eyes a cluster of red embers made from the fires of hell itself. Resolve caught hold as fear turned to anger. I remembered my purpose and released my sword from its prison-like scabbard. Content, I pressed for the attack. I held my sword back, ready to kill, and lunged at the creature, putting everything forward. Weightlessness took me as my feet left the ground. My paralyzed body drifted to the creature like a cobweb on wind. I kicked, thrashed, and screamed in vain as my limbs remained frozen and my whole body dormant. Oh, please, God, help, I prayed in my head. The creature must have heard this as a smile bore on its wicked face revealed. Its maw opened wide, larger than a man. Now too I saw the cause of my terrible death. Rows upon rows, pincers, stingers, and fangs, writhing like maggots inside of its head. Darkness had found me once more again. The moonlight surrendered as its gullet slowly clamped. My armor was useless as each fang pierced metal, their venom injecting, coursing throughout, burning my senses. This was it, the end. But darkness had faltered as the moonlight returned to the world. The monster became smoke and slithered off into night. My body ached and heaved. Desperately, I ripped off my breastplate like a scab from skin. I almost collapsed in fear of what I beheld. Flesh molding, twisting, and breaking. Without a doubt, I could sense my fleeting humanity and evil conquering throughout. An abomination I now am, cursed to this insidious vessel. A corruption of holiness, man's fear of nature given life. I say to you, people of the cities and markets, keep to your towns, stray not from the roads, the forest is mine, lest you behold my wild, tainted eyes. Yeah.